Hi, I'm Chris, one of the surveyors here at Red Current, and today I'm going to talk about FLIR Tools, the free software distributed by FLIR. We're going to look at important images and making a simple and easy PDF report. Clicking on the shortcut on my desktop, I can load up FLIR Tools. As you can see, I have no images inside my FLIR Tools at the moment. However, plugging my camera in using the USB cable supplied, I can import some. I plug one end of the USB cable into my computer and the other end into my camera. I get a little dialog box up like this. From here, I can import my images from the camera, view images that are already saved in my library, but we know there's none there, connect to a live stream so I can see what the camera's seeing up on my computer, and check for updates. It should be noted that not all cameras allow you to connect to a live stream. What I want to do today is import images from my camera so I can create a report. As you'll be able to see, I have seven images saved on my camera. What I want to do is import all images. Clicking the Import All will bring up an option for where I want to save them. I want to save them in the IR Images folder on my computer. Press Import and you'll see them coming and saving onto my computer. I select an option to keep them on the camera as well as save them onto the computer. This way, if there's any problems with saving them onto the computer, I still have them saved on my memory card in my camera. Also, it means I can view them back on my camera anytime I need to. From here, double clicking on one of my images will bring a bit up larger. Here I have lots of options to edit my image. On the left hand side, I have some image control settings. I have some me measurement control settings. I have some settings where allow me to change how the image looks. And I have some information that was recorded when I recorded the image on my camera. The name and the date and time it was recorded, the fact that I have an IR image and a visual image recorded by my camera, any notes I may have entered when recording my image, the parameters that were saved with my image. I can edit these parameters, so I can change the emissivity if I want to, if it's not 0.95. Same with the reflected temperature, the distance, atmospheric temperature, internal optics temperature, internal optics transmissivity and relative humidity. If I added any annotations, I can view them here. As my camera has a GPS in it, it also has a compass as well. And so this is the compass reading and any information that was recorded with my camera. On the other side of the image, I have the measurement settings that I'm interested in. I can change how the image looks by changing the color palette. I'm going to stick with iron as this is what we use for electrical equipment. But if you wanted to, you could use something like rainbow or rainbow high contrast if you're looking at building but I'm going to stick to iron, like I said. You also have different ways to view the image. You can use thermal MSX, which overlays the visual image's main characteristics over the IR image. You can change the way this looks by dragging the slider at the top. You can really saturate the image with lots of information from the visual or block it out almost completely. Somewhere in the middle is generally a nice happy medium. You have thermal only, which is just the raw thermal image. There's nothing, none of the visual overlaying it at all. You have thermal fusion, which FLIR kind of do their own thing and they overlay some of the thermal image with the visual. You have thermal blending, which is a little bit like thermal MSX, but you're overlaying the IR image over the visual instead of the visual over the thermal. You have picture in picture, and you can edit this by clicking this button here. You can move your picture in picture around to what you're interested in and you can change the size of your box and finally visual only image which just gives you the visual image that was recorded at the same time. I'm going to go back to just thermal only image. What I want to do for my report is I want to compare the temperature at the termination of the contactor to the temperature further down the cable. What I'm going to do is take a spot measurement and place it at the cable termination at the contactor and then I'm going to take another spot measurement and place it further down at the cable. I'm going to use this as my reference temperature. You have other options here. You can have an area box which you can overlay and view the minimum, maximum and average temperature inside that area box. You have an ellipse which will give you measurements just like an area box just in a round circle. You have a line measurement which is very similar again and then we have a delta function. This will compare two measurements. It doesn't have to be a spot and a spot. It could be a spot and an area box as well. But for me I'm going to set it so it's a two spot measurements. If you look over here, you can see what you're comparing in your delta. If you click the little cog, you have the option to edit it. I want to compare SP1 
the SP2. And this will give me the temperature difference. So I can see at spot 1 it's 40.1 degrees Celsius and at spot 2 it's 36.5 degrees Celsius and there's a difference of 3.6 degrees. This will do for this image for me. I can now save this and move on to the next one. I'm going to go ahead and edit all my other images for my report. I'll come back to you when I've done this. This is my last image to add measurement settings to. I want to show you the area box function as there's a few more options with it. I'm interested in this L1 phase. I'm going to place my area box over it and what I want to know is my maximum temperature. As you can see straight away you have a little red arrow and a little blue arrow or triangle. This is your maximum temperature and your minimum temperature and these little markers highlight them. If you look over on the side here it will give you the maximum temperature, the minimum temperature and the average. I'm only really interested in the maximum. So if you right click over your area box, you can change what's being displayed. Here you can turn the markers off, not show the average and not show the minimum. Press OK and the markers go and now all I have is the maximum temperature. I'm going to save this and close. All my images are now ready for my report. I'm going to select all seven of them and I'm going to click on the little arrow box next to generate report. Here I can choose what kind of report page I want. I'm going to let you guys play around with these, but I'm going to go for this option here. Click on it and it will generate my report. It automatically adds all seven images in, and it automatically extracts the visual image and the IR image, keeping my measurement options I've brought in. From here, you can either save, export, print, or have some more settings. You can also add your own logo. I'm going to browse for logos and I'm going to be able to add our red current logo. I'm going to use this one for now. Now you can see that red current's logo is at the top. You can add a header if you want to. I'm going to call it the report. Simple. Any text annotations that recorded at the time would be here. I'm not interested in text annotations, so clicking on the box and hitting the delete button deletes it. Same with the compass. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this box up until the compass is gone. Again, I'm not interested in the compass. What you can do to make it easier is add the snap options to grid option. Here you can now see the grid behind and you can move bits and pieces around. You can move your visual image around and it will snap it to the grid nice and easy. Same with the, vis uh, same with the IR image. I'm going to move the measurements out the way. We're going to use those in a minute. But I want to lay this out very slightly different. I'm going to make my IR image bigger, as that's what my client's going to be interested in. I'm going to make it as big as I can. I'm then going to scroll down and have my visual image just below it, with my measurement settings in line. Now, I'm going to want to add some other bits and pieces. I want to add a new text box. So I'm going to click on the text box option and drag that out. Here I can write bits and pieces about what's going on in my IR image. I can say that the contactor K10, in this case, is shown a temperature rise towards the termination. I can also add a marker. So click on this little pickaxe style icon, which is actually an arrow. I can use it to draw my visual image and point out exactly what I'm referring to in my text annotation. Going on to the next page, I can do the same, and so on and so forth, until I've done my report. If I wanted to delete the last page, say I decided that this wasn't actually an anomaly, I can hit the cross button, which will delete the report page. Equally, if I wanted to add a page to it, I can click on the plus option, and this will then give me the option to add another page. But we don't need that other page. When I've finished, I can click save. Clicking on the arrow next to save, I can save it as. And I'm just going to call it report1. Hit save, and it saved my report away. I can export it as a PDF. Hit the export button, and it'll save it as a PDF. Once it's finished creating the PDF, you can then view it on any computer that has a PDF viewer. This then means you can email it to your co-workers and colleagues so they can see exactly what you've been looking at and the information you have found during your thermal imaging survey. I hope you've enjoyed this video.
If you've liked it, hit the like button, let us know. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Thank you for viewing.